Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to Laser Beam Live. This is episode number 15. If you're joining me this evening, wherever you are, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or night, I appreciate you and thank you. How are you guys doing? Let's check out the chat. Scott, welcome to the stream. Um, hopefully you have your laser up and running soon. If you, if you need any help, please send in a ticket. It'll go directly to me. We'll be chatting it up. Dieter, I don't know how to pronounce that name. D-I-E-T-E-R. Let me know if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I probably am. Jack in the shop, a uh, stream legend. Doug, Bill, Chris. We got our CTO Chris in the chat. We got Nicholas. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Today, there's no real project here. There's no real project. I'm just here to chat. I'm here to... Uh, here to share thoughts. I'm here to just chat it up. So hopefully that's not too disappointing for you. If you are looking to a project, definitely check out the back catalog of live streams on the live stream tab on our YouTube channel, CNC Labs, and you can check something out or be back for next uh, our next stream and uh, I'll have a project, a project for you guys. Um, yeah, let's just talk, let's just chat. I see Chris in the chat, shout out Chris, our CTO. He's been working very hard let me, let me boost this up. Since I won't be uh, turning on the laser today, I think I can uh, play with the settings a bit for some, for some better output here. Let's uh, bump this up to 120%. How is that, guys? Hopefully that's a bit better. Appreciate that, Chris. We're, we're getting a little bit better. Our audio is getting a little bit better, and hopefully uh, the stream gets a little bit better as we go on. But uh, speaking of Chris, Chris has been working on a new board. This, okay, you know. Okay, awesome. We bumped it up 20%, so I'll keep that in mind for next time. I also got the little wind, the little wind attachment, hopefully, so next time, even when we are running the driver, hopefully too much of the fan noise doesn't pick up on the mic. Um, we have a new version of our camera I'm going to be trying out next stream, so we're just constantly trying to fix things, and not really fix things, but make things a little bit better uh, each and every time. But uh, I saw Chris talking about the, uh, the new board he's been working on, and guys, he has been, uh, he's been pouring his soul into this new board design, and honestly, from the first looks, um, this board is like going to be the best thing available uh, in this in our little industry, and uh, yeah, I don't want to toot his horn too much before he releases it and confirms everything and gets everything rolling on manufacturing and all that fun stuff. But guys, this board is—I'm <laughs> just gonna say this is this is the greatest CNC bar board ever made. You know, we're not talking about anything on the top end like you know these industrial machines, even though. Uh, this board, like for our industry, for this price point, like a couple thousand dollars north and anything you can get south for sure, this board is going to take things to the next level. It is going to be the most universal board kind of on the market. And for CNC users, it's, it's going to have all the features that you guys have been begging for. Um, but I'm sure the closer we get to uh, selling it, the more Chris is going to be talking about it. So I don't want to steal any of his thunder. I'll just leave it at that. I just, uh, it's, it's sitting on Chris's desk uh, on the other side of this wall. And uh, yeah, the way it looks, uh, the features that it's able to kind of attain, it is so future-proofed. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just exciting. I got it every time I think about, because I've, I've, seen, I've seen you guys uh, send in tickets and I see all the little tiny features that you guys um, want. And I see the more uh, technically adept customers kind of jerry-rigging their own versions of what they want. But guys, yeah, th like, like he's saying in the chat, there is a long way to go, but I've seen all of that. And trust me, Chris has been watching. He's obviously been making his own notes and they, when they're ready, this will be, this will be uh, game changing. If I, you know, uh, I, I feel comfortable using that word. This board is going to be game changing. Yeah, guys, uh, this is, 
if you guys ever talk to Chris, uh, like via ticket or on the phone or anything like that, you know Chris is all about R&D. Like he, he is that guy that's all like things need to be pushed forward in the industry, not even just for us, but like as an open source company for the entire industry. And that's kind of always been his goal. And, you know, I, th I think he achieved something great with this board. But, you know, that's enough. It's not ready right now. So, you know, put your wallets away. Relax a little bit. Let them, let them continue the process that has brought all the great products so far. And uh, when they are ready, they, you guys will have um, something, something great. Keto, we're talking about uh, CNC Labs' new board that Chris is working on. Very far from being done. Don't worry. Uh, guys, nothing, nothing urgent. I just kind of wanted to talk about it because, you know, th their excitement kind of pours over to me when I see uh, on the, st uh, the stuff that our engineers, our CTO, our CEO are working on. That excitement kind of pours onto me. And I'm always excited to share that with you guys. I don't know if you guys watch, like, uh, read every single blog post and stuff like that. But, you know, I try to kind of synthesize that into uh, into these streams. The streams that we don't really have projects going on, which is today, we just finished off the back of a very disappointing three-part <laughs> project. Um, so, you know, this one's gonna be a little bit more chill, a little bit more relaxed. What is happening with the laser? Um, right now, um, we're still working on version two of the prototype. I have the rough design fi like pretty finalized, so I can now start 3D printing and playing with components to, uh, so our next stream will be the, the version two of our prototype uh, roller rotary axis. Again, on the back end, I'm working with Chris, I'm working with uh, our engineers on the chuck rotary axis because we want to be able to use the laser on the chuck as well. So we're gonna be running some projects with that. Um, and again, when they're comfortable enough, when they're far along uh, their, their process, uh, they will also start making a lot more media for you guys so you guys can can check that out. Um, and then next next live stream, we'll be playing with a newer, it'll be a lot closer to what the finalized rotary axis is gonna end up being for the roller. So I'm very excited for that. Um, I've just been kind of racking my brain uh, on how I should kind of design this. There's so many different options out there. There's like this scissor design. There's, you know, you pop off the top and just move it. That was kind of more closer to my original design, but that takes a lot longer time. For me, I'm looking to just have uh, quick and simple. I want you guys to be able to move the width like very quickly uh, within a couple minutes. So I'm working on something simple that won't be too hard to manufacture uh, so we can get that done. So I'm excited to start 3D printing it. I'm probably gonna start 3D printing the files as soon as I get home. Uh, so yeah, that's very exciting for the rotary. For the laser, I am starting to play with the idea, especially alongside this rotary axis, of a, uh, an accessory uh, low-powered laser onto the side that can help you start your project. So it's a, like, I know it would be so useful for you guys because there's no work holding. You usually end up aligning things by eye or maybe you have your grid pattern on your work pad like on your work board or your work material um, and that's how you line things up but I think it's going to be a lot easier to do that if I start developing uh, some sort of kind of uh, crosshair a laser crosshair for the laser beam so that you can just visually all you have to do is line up the heights focus your laser but you know that visually you're going to start at this point so you know that I am playing with because it does lend into the idea of aligning your laser with your actual uh, rotary axis. And then the Chuck team, uh, they're, they're developing a process where you can e either, you know, drill it down to your work material and also have the most accurate way of like finding your starting material, which is super important with the Chuck because you, you're definitely gonna need that accuracy because you're actually milling on the outer kind of the outer circumference or the outer radius of, of the object. So that's super important for them. Yeah, Scott, so Scott says he does projects where like that idea of a, of a crosshair would actually be super useful. I think most people who are using the laser, laser uh, would find that like super, super useful. Uh, so that is something I'm looking into right now. Um, 
it kind of does align very well and it's kind of, it is very simple. It's just more about figuring out how we would like to mount things and how to make it work with the air assist, you know, things like that. So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm mauling on. Unless you guys don't want it, then, you know, I'm not going to waste my time. Uh, I'll throw it in the trash and call it a day. But I have a feeling that some of you guys will find it useful. Enough of you guys will find it useful. So keto, the laser module comes stock with the longer wire. So somewhere down the line, we ex as soon as we were releasing um, all the, um, as soon as we released the 48 machine, we made it so that the stock wires for the laser beam are the longer wire set. So um, if you're having trouble with the, um, of the lasers not reaching the end, go back into the long mill V like, MK2 resources, there is a tab under like the drag chain section where it tells you how many kind of um, links in the drag chain you're allowed to remove uh, for the different lengths. So depending on what lengths you have, you'll be able to remove different linkages. This will, this should give you enough slack. We, we tested all the wires on, on the 48 to make sure that we had enough length there. So if you're finding it a little bit taut, then just go back into the resources, the MK2 resources, the drag chain section, and it'll let you know how many links uh, from the X and the Y axis, depending on how uh, big of a long mill you have, you can actually remove in order to get that slack on the end so you're all good with the uh, wiring for the laser. Uh, thank you, Jack, and thank you, uh, Dana. Seven likes. Come on, guys, get the likes up. We appreciate you guys. You know that. You know that. I'm constantly saying how much I appreciate you. And if you appreciate us, please hit the like button. It helps us. It does help the socials. It does help all the back end, the algorithm. Okay, so Bill says he wants it. So boom, that's a good, that's a good sign. So, you know, that's definitely something I'm going to play with. Um, I'll bring it onto the stream. We could even like design, like uh, our CEO, Andy, has been letting me know, you know, sometimes like today when we don't have a project, we can kind of go into the back end and like, you know, we can, I can kind of show you stuff that I've been working on via like CNC um, product design uh, with, uh, with, I use Fusion 360, so we can kind of go into the 3D modeling aspect. And it would be kind of fun to design something um, from scratch kind of with you guys almost. Like I just start a blank canvas and we just start designing something. I feel like that would be cool. Uh, if that's an idea that you guys like, let me know. Um, definitely want to have some of these, um, these more relaxed streams sprinkled in where we can, I, I can just talk to you guys, you guys being the community and our customers and, and people who, uh, enjoy our content and our product. So that's something I'm super interested in. Uh, uh and you know, not always the stream is going to be like that. Like next, like after the rotary, uh, I definitely, I'm going to try the webcam feature, uh, with Lightburn because I want to play with that. Yeah, Jack, I, I really like Fusion too. Uh, Fusion, it, Fusion Autodesk, the parent company that makes Fusion, um, they actually do offer uh, 3D modeling courses on their website. And they're ran by some really, really, really talented um, mechanical engineers, you know, industrial designers and, and teachers of, of that type of uh, content. So definitely check out um, Autodesk and their library of tutorials. They have really cool ones where, you know, you might be designing a bike, which I've like gone through that one because I used to run an electric bike company. There's one where you design a race car body and you get really, fam it's a really cool way to get really famil familiar with the tools of Fusion 360. So, you know, if you're like me and you like playing around with Fusion 360, definitely check out Autodesk. Um, Scott, the step up in knowledge is, um, hmm, it is pretty big but not big enough where you can't do it. Fusion 360 is like, because you, if you know how to use SketchUp pretty uh, competently, you'll have no problem with Fusion. You'll just get introduced to new features and like you'll be able to do more in Fusion. So in Fusion, sometimes I design super simple. Like I use like the most basic features to design something, which is how you would use it um, go, coming from SketchUp. But then now you'll just have extended features you just have you know, you're gonna have the capability to do more and more and more um, but if you only want to stick to the basic tools 
you can design a whole lot of stuff just using the basic tools. And even me, I run into issues where I'm, I wanna use a tool, I'm not familiar with it, give it a quick Google, jump onto YouTube, uh, jump into the forums, uh, like you would kind of troubleshoot any issue you have with software or hardware. Uh, and I end up doing that too, and I've been using it since I was like 19, 20 years old. I'm like 26, so it's been about six, seven years since I've been using it. And I, even, even me, I still hit a point where like a new feature comes out or a feature I've never had to use before uh, comes out, and I end up just going back and uh, learning about it really quickly. But it, I never end up, uh, the, like learning a new feature is very simple, I, I feel like. Um, I don't think it's just me. I think it's most people where once you kind of have the basics of 3D modeling, um, Learning a new feature is pretty simple. Obviously, there's kind of like a, a crossover, almost like switching from an iPhone to an Android or, or a um, Windows computer to a Mac, where you know what you want to do, you just need to find the right buttons to click to make it happen. So um, that's obviously going to be a hurdle you have to cross, but I would definitely encourage you to do it because um, it, like Fusion 360 even has a CAM system where you can run your projects and things like that, and uh, you can even run simulations and things like that. So it, it is a huge workhorse and uh, I definitely recommend that. Yes, I agree with Jim, uh, it does rule. I no longer can use the free version because uh, I am using it for uh, the company I work for. So uh, we did have to shell out for that professional license, which hurts because I've always used it uh, using like the student and um, hobby license, which is usually free uh, if you're just a hobbyist or if you're a student, uh, you get the Fusion for free. But I feel like they, they kind of cracked down on that. And since I started using it at CNC Labs, we had to buy the professional license because we do not want to break any terms and conditions or rules or laws or anything like that. So we, we shelled out for it. But if you guys are just using it for hobby use, you know, maybe... You know, a little hobby use, uh, definitely check it out. Uh, they usually have the, uh, the free pricing for uh, hobbyists and students. I'm, un I'm not really sure what you're asking. Does that have planned printing? Like, I don't know what that company is. Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure what you're asking. If you try to re reform it, Matt, your question, uh, maybe I can give you a worthwhile answer, but uh, I'm a bit confused reading that. Uh, maybe you're just uh, maybe you're just detailing a feature that I'm not aware of because I've I've just never used SketchUp. So shop plans in SketchUp can export to layout for uh, PDF or doc. Um, yeah, so whatever you make, <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure if they have a shop feature. I remember using a specific uh, software outside of Fusion when I was you know, doing like office planning and stuff like that. But I'd have to imagine if, if, if SketchUp has it, the, uh, I would definitely look to see if uh, Fusion does. I would assume, if I was a betting man, I would say they, they probably have something similar. Alan says, I know that you've recently been testing the laser on metals. Curious if you've done any testing on slate and what the settings. Uh, not sure if you had done it previously. Alan, I had another customer email me about slate and I actually didn't have much to go on. So I think I have to make that a project because it's just a material I've never used. And I don't like, you know, I don't like having materials that are pretty common with the customer that I actually can't recommend settings. So I will definitely buy some slate and I will start playing with it. Maybe we can make some slate coasters for, for a project in the next upcoming uh, couple weeks. Um, yeah, so let me do some digging into that because you're the second person in the past month to ask me about slate and I don't know a lot about it. So that just tells me I need to do some research, need to do some projects so I can give you guys the more relevant information. Um, so yeah, uh, if you don't hear for, if you don't see a, a project with the stream in the next like three streams, um, definitely reach out with a ticket and, and I'll, I'll test it just for, for you customers who are using Slate so I can give you better answers. Oh, so Jack, a more experienced user of Fusion says you can export plans. So uh, you should be all good, Scott. You should be able to do like office or shop design and export as a PDF.
Uh, Dana, what's your curiosity with G Sender Edge? I think Chris might still be in the in the chat, so you know if I can't answer your question, I will send it his way. Um, yeah, Dana, always let let me know what your question is, and I'll 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 try my best. And if I can't, I'll definitely point you in the right direction. But you know, you 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 know what you're doing here. Um, yeah, guys, uh, let me know what type of projects you guys are still. Can GSender open more than one window? Chris, you want to give me a hand with that? <laughs> Do you mean like, um, actually, I have no clue what you mean. If I, I'm not sure if you mean a window as in like, can I open two versions of GSender um, and have them operate independently? Uh, yeah. If you clarify that, Chris is still in here for a couple minutes and he can definitely answer you in the chat for sure. Oh yeah, or connect to two machines, is that what you mean? Like two windows, two, two G senders. Oh, he has two mills, so. So Chris, help me out here and let Dana know if he can connect. So Chris says, currently you can still only open one at a time, but a fun hack is that you can download both G sender and G sender edge simultaneously to run um, two machines. So yeah, that's what I was in, in the back of my mind because I've done that before where I've opened both uh, versions of the software just to check out the differences and to play around with it. So yes, confirmed by the maker himself, Chris, uh, you can uh, just download GSender Edge and the regular GSender um, and then you're all good. You can run two machines uh, at your heart's content. Hallelujah, uh, says Dana. <laughs> that's actually really cool. Uh, I've never actually thought about running two machines at one time, but hey, if you let's say you have like the MK1 and you have the MK2, or you, let's say you have different versions, different sizes, uh, yes, you'll be able to run two projects at the same time. Uh, save yourself some time if you guys are kind of grossing into that, like from hobby to business area, and you kind of need that, you, you will kind of want to up efficiency without having to buy a whole second computer or have a whole second computer uh, stay at your machine. Yeah, I think what m most people do is like Jack does is have one PC per computer, but then it kind of, uh, you kind of have to stay there and keep the software open while you're running it. So I could see if, you know, if you have a laptop that you're running and you want to go inside and get some work done, it kind of can become a, a bit of a bo uh, burden. Yeah, so GSender and GSender Edge, uh, what Chris says is they used to share the same settings. So, you know, if you opened one and opened the other, they would share the same settings, but um, they actually did separate them. So they essentially split them up so that now, even if you change one, let's say you're using laser and laser mode is enabled, which changes uh, Dolge 32 in the EEPROM settings or stuff like that, or the settings you have already kind of inputted, um, they wouldn't carry over if you, you had two. So Chris is going to link something in the chat that will go over that. Um, Alan, G Center Edge is what we're using right now. So you'll see the moniker up here. Oh, let me, let me. So G Center Edge is what I'm using right now. And the differences, or at least the, the minor differences, there are some big differences like being able to run um, your, your G Center from a different computer over this, if you're on the same LAN network and things like that. But we have this amazing laser illustrator and uh, when you put laser code into GSender Edge, it always looks better because you have more detailing of what's actually going on. Um, but so Keto asks, um, couldn't you run or get a Raspberry Pi for the second sec for the secondary computer? Uh, Chris, before you go, I know there was a specific Raspberry Pi, I think it was, some people are able to run it on Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 3, I think it might be 4, um, so some people actually did have some, did have some success running their machine on, a, on a, a more updated Raspberry Pi, I know it was definitely one of the more modern ones that can, that, that had a little bit more, you know, capability, uh, but yes, some people do run their, run their machine via a Raspberry Pi and G Sender, um, I think it's just one of the more, you know, capable ones. So, you know, I wouldn't, you know, I have a bunch of Raspberry Pis, but they're from like 
seven years ago. So I don't think that something like that could run it. But I think some of the more modern stuff would be. Yeah, so Jack, that would be super cool. If you, if you try the Raspberry Pi 4 that you have, let us know if that works. That would be uh, cool for some people. Some people like, um, you know, it's nice to have kind of, it's almost, almost turns it into like an offline system, um, which is something that, you know, the guys here, uh, Chris has been working on with the new board. You know, I'm not going to get into it. But, you know, let, let's just say you won't really need a Raspberry Pi with this new controller that uh, Chris is working on right now. Okay, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's all I'm saying. Cool stuff is happening. Um, on other news, we are uh, looking into moving out of this space and, and moving into a larger space. Um, that's something a lot of the operational team has been looking at and Chris and Andy have been looking at different spaces and um, contemplating it for a while. Um, but you know, now I think it's a more realistic possibility. Yeah, it's actually great uh, to Dana. Great that it does that. Um, shouts out Chris and the software and development team. You guys are the best, um, but yeah. We are looking to move out of this place. Um, just for some backstory, uh, uh, when, I, when I joined CNC Labs, I think it was 2019, 2020, some of it, some of it around there. Um, yeah, you know, I agree with Vernon. Chris is heading out, so thank you, Chris, for joining the live stream. Um, well, I'll chat with you when I see you in the office, but um, definitely appreciate you for all you do. And I think everybody in the chat, uh, by default, even if they don't know who you are, definitely appreciates you for all that you do. Um, good night. So yeah, w when I joined this company, it was about a, a month later, uh, we outgrew the space that we had and Andy and Chris decided to move us into the space now, but we had maybe half, less than half the space. We had maybe a quarter of the space in this building. And slowly, because of your support over the years, we slowly moved out. We, we were able to take over the shop area because we just outgrew the, the main space. And that was amazing because we had this prototyping room and slowly it became this place where we can test and build and do all this fun stuff that didn't have to do with production out there and could house uh, bigger tools and things like that, turned it into a proper shop. That was exciting. And then more down the line there, we, were reach, we, we had an opportunity uh, to take over the entire building, which is our current setup right now, which is we take up this entire building and it was great. And we were able to grow and grow and we got those big pallet racks in our, in our shop. So we were turning into a real you know, manufacturing space and then you know, you guys with the MK2 over the past, you know, 14 months with the MK2 support. I know if you've ordered one, uh, you've, you've realized that we do have a bit of a lead time that we're slowly working down or working through our way through. But because of the support you guys have, we're now in the position uh, to be looking at an even bigger space. So that's super exciting. And honestly, it's something that, you know, I never... I never, I knew we could get here, but it never, like, there was never, like, a clear picture. And um, now that we're kind of here, it seems, like, super clear of, like, how we're going to outgrow this space and go into the next one, which is super exciting. So I, I just kind of wanted to talk about it because it's just, it's, it's a good time. I've, I've been here for a while. Um, July, July makes four years, and um, the company has not stopped growing since. And I think that's just off the backbone of listening to you guys, of what you guys actually want. And then like a year later, we actually give it to you. <laughs> like, I feel like when, when we get enough messages of people want this thing, um, I feel like we're one of the quicker moving companies in the industry. But I feel like we do give the people what they want. And because of you guys, um, yeah, it's... Uh, Preston, it stands for Mark, uh, like Mark II, like the, 
Yeah. The only other time I've heard that is uh, when <laughs> with the Iron Man suits, like Mark Mark Seventeen, like. Um, but yeah. So. What am I working on currently? So obviously, prototype two for the rotary axis, but now like. Now we're really getting into the nitty gritty for how we want the software uh, to interact with both rotary axes, right? That is like um, top three on my priority list, obviously prototyping and then. Thank you, Keto. That is great. The connection CNC fosters with its users in one of the, uh, is one of the reasons that Keto bought the MK2 instead of the rest. Um, I think that's exactly that's exactly kind of what we had going forward in the beginning. We were willing to talk to you guys over the phone and walk you through the purchasing process. We were willing to answer your emails in a timely fashion, providing as much information as possible. We were able to amass a, a library of resources and we created the library of resources so that you guys had capabilities. And then after that, we were able to amass this huge library of content so that not only could you guys read the resources and talk to us directly, but you guys could watch us assemble something. You guys could watch us fix something. You guys could watch us make something or even just watch us talk about the future of our company, whether you're reading uh, Andy's blog posts or Chris's blog posts or my blog posts or you're watching us here. It's like that's what we wanted from the get-go. We didn't want to be one of these faceless companies where we just turn into a conglomerate and you just never hear from us. If your if your lasers or if your if your order is uh, having trouble at the borders, you have nobody to reach out to. If uh, things are breaking on your machine, um, nobody's talking about the warranty anymore. Nobody, everybody wants you to pay for replacements and stuff like that. Um, we wanted to just be a little bit better. We wanted to be better than that. Uh, and Scott. Um, I didn't say it, you did. So, you know, <laughs> I, uh, hey, I don't want to see anybody cry, but, uh, you know, I'll leave it at that. Uh, no, no, no update on, on the, on the quick swap, um, option. Um, but the magnetic mount is something I'm going to do. I'm gonna do the magnetic mount this year. This year is the year of the laser accessories for me. So rotaries one, um, the laser crosshair system is two, uh, the air ventilation system is three, and a magnetic mount for the laser uh, is number four. So if I could get all four of these products out, or at least um, at least uh, a couple of the products out, and then the rest still in development, so they'll be. AKA they'll be out soon. If I can get those four things moving this year, that's a success for me. Uh, that gives you a lot, that gives our current customers more accessories for their laser. If they like using it, then the accessories are gonna be right up their alley. And that gives the people who are just coming into the industry um, all the features and all the accessories up front, you know. Yeah, Dana, why haven't you why haven't you been doing lives? You got the you got the you got your your fans wanting you to do your lives. Yeah, Jack, that like in the early days when we just moved into this space, um, it was you know it was me, it was Chris, it was Andy, it was our our head of operations Patrick, and it was a few other Packers at the time. And I remember there was like for a period of like a year or two, I would answer like every other phone call. And, you know, back when I wasn't so technical, I didn't understand the technical side. When people wanted to speak to the owner, like, yeah, Chris is over here and he's over here. I would just be like, hey, uh, this guy wants to speak to you. And they would grab the phone and they would have a whole chat. And then uh, when I got so when I got familiar with all the technical um, aspect of things, I was able to just talk to you guys on the phone. So I know a lot of you early guys, you guys probably had like 30 minute phone calls with me <laughs> if you called in and you were like thinking about getting the long mail because I would just, I would just lay it all out for you. I'm not trying to upsell. If, if you tell me that you need it for X, Y, and Z, I'm not gonna tell you, unless the long mail works for X, Y, and Z, I'm not gonna tell you the long mail works for X, Y, and Z. And I think we've continued that uh, f like till today where if you, if you get to us, we'll get back to you. 
I think that's the bare minimum we could do for you is that you should never purchase something for the price that you're purchasing the long mill or the laser or any of the accessories and not have, not be able to get in touch with somebody real uh, to get your, your issues heard or your, your problem solved. So Raster, Raster the Grain says slate etches uh, wonderfully. That's what I've been reading on all the blog posts and the videos. Um, I just need to jump right into it so that I can actually give more uh, realistic advice. But guys, if you have, if you if you want to do slate, uh, definitely just watch some YouTube tutorials out there because you know, like Dana, um, I think like Vernon, I think he makes content. I'm not 100 percent sure, but like a lot of people, Dana for sure, Bucky's Customs. There's a lot of people who make content uh, around gerbil-based machines, more specifically the long mill. Same thing with. Uh, diode lasers and more specifically the laser beam. So, you know, if I'm not getting to it fast enough, jump into the, the world of CNCing and hobby CNCing and tutorials and definitely watch some tutorials. Uh, but I will, I will grab some slate and I will get to, uh, I will get to playing with it. Mick wants a hot dog. Don't we all want hot dogs? Glizzy on a Thursday evening, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, don't let, don't let society tell you how your food should be shaped, okay? There ain't nothing wrong with a meat cylinder. Hey, wait, okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I didn't, that, that came out wrong. That came out wrong. I'm just enjoying reading the chat. You guys are actually hilarious. You guys uh, make my week. Um, You guys are funny. Uh, yeah, let me know if you guys have any, any other questions. Or, um, and if you're, a, um, if you're a user of a rotary axis, whether you use a roller rotary axis or a chuck style rotary axis and you use light burn and or G sender, not mutually exclusive, whether you use light burn or G sender or both or neither, if you own a rotary axis, a roller or a chuck, send me an email use the word laser because I would like to talk to you guys um, how, how you guys like your current software workflow, how you guys kind of keep things um, consistent. And I would like to just talk to you guys to get a better idea of what you guys want from the software on our end. I think that's gonna be better to inform our choices on what we do going forward. Yeah, Scott, the inductive sensors aren't necessary for the laser because you kind of as long as you line things up and you know you can kind of start things and I, I've never used the induction the induction sensors for a laser job um, but they can be useful they can be useful especially if you're looking for repeatability but I just don't don't personally use them hot dog on a rotary axis you know that's a hey if any of you guys are VCs and you're looking for the next big idea I think hot dogs on a rotary axis is definitely up there but yeah, Scott, not really needed for laser. Yeah, so guys, again, if you guys have any experience with the rotary chuck or rotary laser, um, send me an email with the, uh, use the word laser so it comes directly to me. I just wanna pick your brains. I wanna know how you, what your current workflow is, what things would you change, and then that can help me inform the, the software engineering team and Chris uh, how we want to add certain features for this. Uh, Nicholas uh, asks if you've lasered a bo the bottom of a bowl without hitting the walls, what lens uh, to laser from far away? So the, th the three element lens has like about a 67 millimeter um, focal length. Um, the G7 has a 70, I think about, and I think the G8 has about 80. So if you want like as much space as possible, I would go with the G7 or G8. Um, that focuses on the end of its um, of its thread, so it's actually pretty far from the aluminum. Uh, use two of the 13 millimeter springs to keep a little bit of tension on there, so it doesn't fall out or anything. It doesn't uh, unscrew it at all. And then I would say, you know, measure the outer diameter of your bowl on the outside. Um, cut a cut a hole in a piece of paper, like tape a piece of paper, 
measure the outside diameter of your bowl, like the, usually there's like an imprint of the bowl, measure that so that when you cut the paper that size, you can put the bowl in, you can make sure your zeros are good and everything, and then you can measure the inside circle of your bowl and use your designing, uh, use those as like reference designs um, so that you can make sure to just hit, so measure that inside of the bowl diameter so that you know how big, and then if you line up with the outside, uh, with the inserts, then uh, you should be all good. The springs just add a bit of tension. They add a bit of tension against the uh, against the uh, the lens because if your if your laser is moving very 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 quickly, there is a small chance that it could twist ever so slightly out of uh, focus. It doesn't really happen, but we wanted to kind of give you guys something from the get go that would uh, kind of combat that. Will the Chuck Rotary work uh, be shipping to me tomorrow? Uh, I'm not sure. Wait, have you been talking to, to the engineers about it? Because I'm not sure. Or are you just hoping that we're just about done and ready to ship? Um, Raster the Grain says, any update on the potential US-based US location? No, but we did uh, create the company um, the US version of our company. So uh, there, that is in the process. Andy is working on that. He's working on fixing uh, this customs issue that some of you guys are dealing with and making sure things are all good. Why not place the lens rigid so that you can use a focus block? Why did I not make the lens rigid? I didn't make the lens rigid just because it, there usually is a range in which it'll focus in. Um, I wanted to be able to swap out lenses, so it ended up, that ended up like me being using threads. I didn't want to design a lens from scratch or the lens holding mechanism. Yeah, there's probably a lot of there's probably a lot of reasons why I'm not like that was like I was almost two years ago when I was designing it, so I'm not I'm not. 100% sure. It was kind of the industry standard at the time too, as well. Like uh, it's, some, it's either like adjustable with um, with the, uh, the the threads, or you know you make fixed lenses and it becomes a little bit hard and a little bit more uh, complex of a design, in order to swap them out, or you just stick with the one lens. Um, this was just the easiest and most like um, yeah, this was the this was one of the easier ways to do it and make things adjustable and kind of like lends itself to like the range of focus, right? Um, hoping, okay, Dana. Uh, I feel like you'd be on a short list if we were given out, you know giving out some early beta stuff. So uh, just keep hoping, keep hoping. Yeah, Vernon, it totally makes sense. It totally makes sense. I'm just like trying to remember why I didn't do it. And like, I just don't have a great answer for you. Um, maybe there is something we can do with like these like screw on spacers so that all you have to do is twist the lens until it gets to like the spacer, right? And then that tells you exactly what the focal, where the focus is going to be. And then with the focus finder, that gets you to the height. And then with the, um, maybe this little call it, that gets you to exactly the threads that you need to be. So it's definitely something I can, I can think about uh, a little bit more and play with, you know, if that makes things, yeah, uh, that would make things easier for you guys. Cause then all you have to do is just twist until you hit the bump. Yeah, and then you, yeah, you just twist until you hit like the stop, and then you just know because it stopped, I'm all good. So uh, yeah, let me let me three D print something real quick, and and we'll just uh, we'll see. I think it's I think it's M nine. I think they're M nine by um, zero point five millimeter threads. So you know, I'm gonna see if I can just three D print some some collets um, and see if if that'll work. If it does then you know, we'll add it to the shop and, and make that purchase, uh, purchasable for you guys. And we'll make some resources for it as well. Um, yeah, that's actually, that's a great idea. 
That is a great idea. Thank you, Vernon. Um, just so I remember, Vernon, if you wouldn't mind sending in a ticket um, with, your, with that idea um, and just use the word laser in it so it goes directly to me, that would be great because, yeah, I don't want to forget, and that is a really good idea that might help people in the beginning. Like for anybody who knows what focus is and then you focus each of the lenses once, you kind of have a general idea where you're going to focus. You know, you get it to the height, you twist it a few times, and then you're pretty like on point. But for anybody new, finding that focus the first time can be really like hard. I think you might start second guessing yourself, like, is this the smallest or is this the smallest? Um, and if, you know, if there's like a, you know, tiny little thing that we could 3D print and add or get like uh, get made uh, out of metal and add that just saves you that like first like week or first couple hours of playing with it, if, if it can save you guys that, that confusion, that's definitely something I'm interested in. And um, I think some more of the new guys, uh, new customers, people who are newer to lasers and CNCs might actually be interested as well. So great idea, Vernon. Thanks for sharing that with me. Um, if you wouldn't mind, send me a ticket and just kind of lay that out, what we talked about here, and then that'll help me re remember and, and keep an eye on that, start playing with it, start 3D printing some stuff. All right, guys, 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 I'm here for a little bit longer. I'm here for just a little bit longer. So, you know, I don't want to feel like you guys are going to miss me or anything. But if you guys have any other questions, any great ideas like Vernon, let me know. Um, if you guys have any project ideas, okay, we have like, there's obviously Rotary Axis V2. There's Slate. There's um, playing with the webcam feature on Lightburn. Those are the three I have in my head right now that I plan on doing. But if you guys have any other project ideas, if you guys are sick of hearing me talk and you'd rather just watch and get hypnotized by the laser doing a project for this hour, please let me know. I will add it to the list uh, and we'll get it done. If it's feasible and when it's interesting, we'll get it done. So let me know if you guys have any ideas. If you guys have any questions, um, that would be great. Let's uh, end this off. Let's end the stream off nice and high. Did you do the stainless steel etching? No, we didn't. We haven't done stainless steel. We did this like steel alloy, whatever it was. We did the um, the brass, which engraved good sometimes and then bad the last time we did it. Um, we will be playing with tumblers on the rotary axis, which is usually stainless steel, but we're only really engraving the uh, powder coat away. So that is our next, that is something interesting. Webcam and two G senders on one computer is the bomb. Great. Did you try to defocus the laser on stainless steel? Tell me more about that, Jack, because I'm not sure what that, what that entails. But it's something I can always try. What metal failed two weeks ago? That was both the steel and the brass. Yes, that was the steel and the brass. I think we did one on each and they both failed. That doesn't mean that you're gonna fail the same way, but it just didn't work for me and you can go back and double check the settings and know that at least for those settings, they're not really gonna work. Raise the focus about two millimeters. I didn't try that. I did not try that. Um, Has anybody tried color lasering? I've never, I've never tried that. That does sound interesting. That does sound a little bit, a little bit fun. Dana, thank you for joining. Thank you for being such a great part of this community. Thank you for all you do. Dana, you have a great night. And everybody, in, on Dana's behalf, please like the stream. Like the stream. Give it a comment once it ends. You know, always helps. It's always great. It warms my heart and it warms the heart of the YouTube algorithm. How are you guys feeling? You know the deal, we usually end around nine o'clock, got about 10 minutes, unless you guys are just tired of me, because I could go, you know, I could just go home and take a nap, you know, make some pasta. Let me know. You guys have any more questions? Uh, Vernon, you could just send it uh, through our ticketing system on our website. If it has the word laser, it comes directly to me.
Allen, I don't want to blame it on the, I'm not going to blame it on the spray because um, certain people, certain people, um, or people have been able to do it with the diode laser. So I have to blame it on the material I cho chose and my settings because people have been doing it. Um, so I have to kind of blame the failure on the material I chose and the settings that I used because I've seen people use this exact spray and have great results with diode lasers. Scott, if you have any issues with the laser, let us know. If you have any issues with the CNC, let us know. Uh, just send in the ticket. Uh, yeah, Vernon, same thing for you. Just send in the ticket. If it has the word laser, it's coming directly to me. Yeah, awesome. I'm not here to take up too much of your time. I'm here to be just a little bit of spot, just a, just a small spot in your schedule where we can chill, talk about lasers, usually do a project. Um, so yeah, you guys let me know if you have any other questions and uh, or else I'll just end the stream here. I'm, I'm all good. I know I'll see you guys in a few weeks with something a little bit more interesting than this stream. Um, even though I do like just relaxing a little bit and just chilling and just, I can actually keep my eye on the chat and, and really be a part of the conversation. So I do appreciate that. Um, but yeah, any other questions, any other, any other ideas for projects, any other ideas? Again, guys, if you, you, if you guys have, are using a rotary axis or a, ro a roller rotary axis or a chuck rotary axis right now, um, and you guys are already using it, send me an email, use the, put the word laser in it so it comes to me. Uh, I just wanna pick your brain on how you guys use the software aspect of things, what is your current workflow, and how we can make that a little bit simpler with G-Sender. Doug, you have a good night. Alan, you guys have a good night. Mick, you have a good night. Vernon, have a good night. Keto, have a good night. Scott, have a good night. Yeah, they do get posted uh, on our website. Just go to the live tab on CNC Labs uh, YouTube channel and you'll be able to see everything. So guys, Raster the Grain, have a good night. Nicholas, have a good night. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Everybody, have a good night. Uh, this is Laser Beam Live, episode number 15. I will be back in two, year, in two weeks, not two years, two weeks with a brand new rotary prototype. We can throw away the old one. It's garbage, it's trash, it's mid, it's whatever. Let's get rid of that one. Let's usher in the new. Let's play with some more laser projects um, and let's do the stuff. So guys, thank you so much for joining me. It's only an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, but I appreciate this time so much. It's kind of one-on-one -on -one with you guys, just talking to the customers, talking to the community, talking to the people who care about lasers and, and CNCs and stuff. So I appreciate it every two weeks. I hope you do as well. Jack, you are the laser goat. I appreciate you. And just like Jack would say, like, like the video, like the stream, give it a thumbs up, comment on it when it's done. I appreciate you guys, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. This is Laser Beam Live, and I will catch you on the